Hello, this is Grant Richardson. We are doing a critique of progressive Christianity or the new liberal Christianity, which denies many of the verities of the Bible and of Christianity itself. It's ironic that they call themselves Christian. But nevertheless, we are throughout this entire series are showing how Christians know what they know is true. We have looked at the non-Christian paradigm of dialectical thinking, whereby man through man's interaction with thesis and antithesis and synthesis, forming a new thesis, constantly tries to use a horizontal method for arriving at truth. But that's not the biblical paradigm. The biblical paradigm is not dialectic. The biblical paradigm is didactic. Now, it's important that you watch these videos in sequence because they are building on one another. If you're jumping in at the fifth video, you have missed all the ground we have laid to come to this point. We did a critique of the dialectical method and of the entire approach uh, that that takes. And now we are at the Christian method, which is didactics. Now let's review the anti-biblical paradigm. Progressive Christians find scripture out of touch with what they deem to be true. Their authority resides in prevailing leftist thinkers and thinking, in other words, horizontal human thinking. Didactic truth cannot be molded into culture, with the culture having the upper hand if one is consistent with biblical teaching or with the idea that God has revealed himself, has shown himself in propositions. By cutting themselves off from the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God, progressive Christianity cuts itself loose from the possibility of examining the factuality of the Bible and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The source of belief, therefore, is the issue at hand. It is a question of authority. Is it the self? Is it culture? Prevailing opinion? or what God has said about himself in the Bible. To put the Bible at the mercy of self-authenticating perspectives is to fundamentally change the authority of what one believes. The intention of the Bible is to answer questions, not ask them or hypothesize about them, as Richard Rohr claims. God did not intend that we decide what is true from the self. The self is the object of revelation, not its subject. In other words, Christianity is fundamentally didactic. It's fundamentally propositional, but it's God's propositions. It is what God is saying, and God wants us to examine the validity and accuracy and truth of what he has said. Aristotle put the question of propositional truth in clear perspective. Remember, propositions have to do and are interface with the concept of logic. Aristotle was the one who formulated formally logic as we know, Aristotelian logic. But this is what Aristotle had to say. And the issue of how we know what we know, is it propositional or is it somehow resting in some other kind of authority? This is what Aristotle said. To say of what is that it is not, or of what is not that it is, is false. While to say of what is that it is, and of what is not, that it is not, is true. So that he who 
says of anything that it is or that it is not will say either what is true or what is false. In other words, look at the proposition, the didactics, the deduction from God through what he has to say. Our worldview is not something we see. It's something that we see with. Truth is true whether we see it or not. The sun is out there whether we acknowledge it or not. So the question is, how do you see or interpret God who transcends finiteness? The only way we are going to know about him is for God to show himself. He shows himself by an anthropopathism, that is, an emotion, a human emotion, or an anthropomorphism, by a physical presentation of trying to understand God. God underneath are the everlasting arms. God doesn't have arms, but it depicts him as a providential God. Now let's look at the biblical paradigm. The Bible is the fulcrum of what Archimedes said. Remember he said, if I could find a lever long enough and a place to stand so I could use that lever, I could move the world. The Bible is what is the Christian's lever. It's, it's the fulcrum by which we can understand God. The other method, or the opposite, is to relapse into sentimentalism or other systems of denying Christianity, which will end up in finite conclusions. We can't revert to cultural influence or human systems. If we do, we'll end up with human thinking. Any approach that elevates any authority over the Bible, other than the revelation God has given of himself, reverts to subjective antithesis or dialectics. This fallacy is sometimes called reimagining scripture. The assertion that the Bible is the word of God is either true or false. If true, then it is true regardless of personal opinion because truth is a property of propositions. It does not rest on culture, subjective opinion, or personal perspective. Now let's look at the nature of truth. Truth by nature is non-contradictory. That is the principle of the excluded middle in logic. If it's black, it can't be white. They both, you cannot have both black and white simultaneously at the same time. Truth is absolute, especially the truth that God says in his word. It doesn't depend on culture or the prevailing opinions of man. So it doesn't depend on a time or place or conditions. From God's viewpoint, truth is didactic. He has deduced what he wants us to know about himself in words and in revelation and personally by the Holy Spirit intervening in a person's life. Therefore, truth is discovered. It's not made or concocted by a personal opinion. Truth is descriptive, that it agrees with reality. If it contradicts reality, then it can be shown to be false. Truth is inescapable. Truth is always true, and it will always come out to be true. It's consistent with what is real. Therefore, truth is unchanging. God said that he himself is unchanging, and also what he has to say to man is unchanging as well.
Carl Henry, one of the greatest theologians of the previous century, wrote four theologies dealing with propositional truth. Henry's formal definition of propositional revelation is given near the end of volume three. Quote, we mean by propositional revelation that God supernaturally communicated his revelation to chosen spokesmen in the express form of cognitive truth and that the inspired prophetic apostolic proclamation reliably articulates these truths in sentences that are not internally contradictory. Therefore, truth is propositional. And the view of truth that I want to set forth is that truth is propositional and only propositional. To put it even more plainly, truth is a property, characteristic, or attribute of propositions. This view is in stark contrast to other views, both academic and popular, of truth as, for example, an encounter, truth as an event, truth as experiential, or truth as emotive, truth as personal, truth as mystic absorption into union with the divine. All of that is non-propositional. A proposition, therefore, is the meaning of a declarative sentence. This would exclude an interrogative, an imperative, and exclamatory sentences, and they do not express a proposition. So therefore, according to scripture, truth is always and only propositional. There is nothing in scripture that states or implies that truth is something other than a statement what God says it is. Now, what is the relationship of propositional truth to belief? There's a clear relationship. The object of belief is always a proposition. Christ is not a proposition, but we can know him only propositionally. When he says, I am the truth, that means he is the basis of truth. That is a figurative idea. However, he is not beyond truth. Otherwise, that would be mysticism. Belief in Jesus involves believing in his words. For if you believe Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, propositions, how will you believe my words? Belief in Moses is belief in his spoken propositions and not belief as an encounter. For God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2.4. A belief does not depend on our mind believing it, for truth of a proposition is independent from the mind. The statement, Henry Ford was one of the first mass manufacturers of automobiles, is true whether I believe it or not. It does not depend on the quality of my belief. Statements need facts to be true, not the reverse. Let's return to chapter nine of my book, Certainty, A Place to Stand, we had just looked at the idea of the unbiblical paradigm for coming to truth. And now we're going to look at more specifically the biblical paradigm for coming to truth. And as I said earlier, the biblical paradigm is didactic. This is the key word in the epistles, that is, uh, the pastoral epistles, which is 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. And the Greek word didache, or didactics, or deducing certain things for man to understand. Clearly, the Bible is didactic or propositional and not dialectical in its approach. 
God Fixes and Presets Principles of Revelation in the Form of Propositional Truth or Didactic Truth. You notice in Genesis 3, Satan did not want Adam and Eve to look at didactic truth, but he wanted them to enter into a dialogue. Has God said? God said, you shall not. But Satan whispered, has God said? Now, at its fundamental basis, this was an attempt to become, quote, like God. In other words, God has not given man the prerogative of universals, of knowing everything, ultimate truth. Man is dependent upon God showing himself through revelation. Adam and Eve's attempt and Satan's desire was that they become like God, knowing good and evil, knowing what's right and what's wrong. Post-conservatives and progressive Christians want transformational or dialectical ministries. They try to move the church from didactic propositions to a dialectical process orientation, the very tool that Satan used to deceive Eve. Picking and choosing and then refining truth into a relationship paradigm. Aversion to the closed didactic paradigm of inerrant inspired revelation is at the philosophical heart of radical emergent thinkers of 10 years ago and at the heart of progressive Christians of today. Paul warns believers to avoid the antithesis that is involved in dialectical process. Notice what this says in 1 Timothy 6.20. Oh, Timothy, guard what is committed to your trust, avoiding profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. In other words, thesis, antithesis, synthesis, new thesis. Christianity rests on what God says, not how people think. Post-conservatives reject the correspondent view of truth. You remember we said earlier that there are two fundamental views of truth, coherent or correspondent. The correspondent view of truth says that man's, what man asserts is true, what proposition is affirmed must be true to logic and to facts and to what follows. Primarily, progressive Christians hold to a coherentist view of truth, where beliefs rest on other beliefs and propositions and are not justified by derivation from foundational propositions. In other words, it is what man thinks is a starting point. If they, it's got to be the coherentist view merely holds to the the comprehensiveness of the idea, the cohesive consistency of propositions. Hundreds of pages in the Old Testament use words that carry the idea of correspondent truth. The primary terms for truth in the Old Testament, emmet, and the New Testament, aletheia, both carry correspondent meaning. In addition, many passages explicitly contrast true propositions with falsehood. Repeatedly, the Old Testament warns against pro false prophets who wor whose words do not correspond to truth. Facts make a proposition true because there is a correspondent relation between a proposition and a relevant fact. The dialectical view of truth rejects correspondence and presumes personal assertions. Post-conservatives and progressive Christians assume that their assertions are true destroys the dialectical process, approach to truth if they were to affirm that, for they assume a dialectical form of argument to establish their dialectic. They can never have confidence or certainty of truth by the dialectical process.
A dialectical view of truth puts us in contradiction with reality. Truth has consequence and falsity has consequence. Dialectic truth holds to a clear notion of antithesis. Belief and unbelief stand as polar opposites. If something is true, then the opposite is untrue. That's the excluded middle in logic. Post-conservatives and progressive Christians hold ant antipathy to this kind of antithesis because they are relativists about propositional truth. Truth always corresponds to reality, and postmodernism always results in skepticism. If you take this approach, the dialectical approach, you will always end up in skepticism. This has been true from the days of Protagoras, Socrates, and Plato. Postmodernism itself is a corresponding truth, that there is no consensus on truth. Postmoderns abandon knowable absolutes and conclude that we must med mediate all truth through the subjective perspective of the knower. It all comes back to the self, to the person that is the authority with progressive Christians. Brand McLaren is a good example of someone who uses the dialectical process rather than the didactic process. He believed that systematic theology should be an ongoing dialogue in search for truth. In other words, he can't find truth. He's always in the process of discovery. His thinking is a combination of dialectical belief system with the philosophical instrumentalism of William James, who is the basic philosopher of modern education in North America. William James held that the process of finding truth was more important than the discovery of truth. Notice McLean holds to a coherentist rather than a corresponding view of truth. According to him, Jesus taught us that the way to know what God is like is not by determining our philosophical boundary, conditions, definitions, delineations before departing, but rather the way to know is by embarking on an adventure of faith, hope, and love even if you don't know where your path will lead. Well, if he is declaring something, this concept to be true, how does he know that that is true? He has made a conclusion about something that cannot make conclusion about, according to him. In other words, he has contradicted himself by concluding and yet still maintaining the idea that you can't conclude. Now, this is the foundational dialectical instrumentalism of our day. McLaren maintains two fundamentals of faith, to love God and to love our neighbor, which of course are not fundamental in the normal sense of the term, but are primary life goals for the believer. Doctrine reduced to these two is reductum ad absurdum when it comes to claims for truth. In other words, the very mode by which he has chosen to come to truth preempts his coming to truth. Before the introduction of dialectical thinking, people thought in terms of antithesis and carried a unified field of knowledge, the law of logic called the law of non-contradiction. Dialectical thinkers do not think in terms of cause and effect, but in terms of synthesis. They seek truth in synthesis rather than in antithesis. Synthesis undermines the whole idea of certainty in how we know what we know is true. To them, there is truth in thesis and antithesis. This makes all assertions of truth relative. You wonder why they cannot be confident or certain about anything is because their methodology is a relativist approach to truth. Nothing can ever be concluded because it's all relative to the knower. This dialectical methodology assumption is at the heart of progressive Christians and post-conservatives. 
Synthesis as over against antithetical methodology forms pseudo Christianity. And that's what we have in progressive Christianity. It's a false thesis. It has nothing to do or very little to do with Christianity and what is has proposed. It is a system that's been opposed upon Christianity. Historically, Christianity has not thought in terms of what progressive Christianity holds, but they have established this new system, imposed it on the didactic propositional approach to what God has said in his word. The Bible presents logical consistency regarding truth, a coherence of truth that is true to facts. That's what the person who is examining the truth of scripture needs to keep in mind. The problem is that man is finite and can to, cannot come to truth as a whole. So his views are tentative and provisional if he comes to truth through his own presuppositions or assumptions. Dialectical and coherent thinking is true if we begin with finiteness. There will always be a dynamic tension between thesis and antithesis if we use the coherentist view of truth, because both are inadequate as a self-contained approach. Indeed, humanity is in the, an endless process of discovery if there is no objective starting point, no post to no place to stand, no revelation in propositional form. No believer can justify or warrant any view as true in this context. Any approach to ultimate truth by finite human humans is foolish. The problem is that mankind stands in enmity or antipathy against God. There's a massive difference in worldview originating from that enmity. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of, of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Now, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 shortly. That whole argument of that chapter deals with how do we know what we know is true. Also, chapter 2 is arguing for that thesis as well. So the Bible presents truth in an objective sense, not in the way one constructs understanding or how one interprets a position. Postmodernism perceives truth not as objective, but as personal, subjective, and pragmatic. In other words, if, if they don't take the propositional, if truth, if a proposition is true, and that a proposition only true or false, depending on the nature of the proposition. McLaren believes that not only should our methodology change, but the message should change as well. He represents himself as offering not only a high challenge in method, but a high change in message. The ongoing change of mission demands that we change our message, according to him. It requires new content, new truth, he says. These new messages are not incompatible with the gospel of the kingdom Jesus taught and asserts the Holy Spirit will guide them into new previously unknown truth. That is a complete misunderstanding of that idea about the Holy Spirit being our teacher. This has major implications for the closing of the canon of scripture. There is significant distinction between the progress of doctrine, which is valid, and the revelation of new truth. Next time, we will look at the Bible and the propositions, the extant propositions of the Bible, which says how we can know what we know to be true.